Hi everyone, it's May 13, 2018. Before I start, I want to recommend again Waking Times. You might want to bookmark this website because they have an awful lot of good articles, diverse articles. In fact, I am going to recommend this article to save the world, get your shit together. Oh, sorry to those who can't handle a curse word. But I'm going to be focusing on, right here, this article, internal emails show FDA is withholding the fact that foods in your pantry are laced with glyphosate. Laced. The Guardian had posted an article, they coming across information regarding our FDA and how our food is now poisonous. The Guardian obtained internal FDA documents that researchers within the FDA know full well that common foods are contaminated with glyphosate. In one email, FDA chemist Richard Thompson admits that food from his own home was tested positive. So he brought wheat crackers, granola cereal, cornmeal from his home and found a fair amount of glyphosate in the foods that he had in his pantry. Thompson, who is based in an FDA regional laboratory in Arkansas, wrote that broccoli was the only food he had on hand that he found to be glyphosate free. A internal FDA email dated tw uh, January 2017 is part of a string of FDA communications which you can get to by clicking on this hyperlink that detail agency efforts to ascertain how much of the popular weed killer is showing up in American food. Thompson's detection of glyphosate was made as he was validating his analytical methods, meaning those residues will probably not be included in any official report. We are eating glyphosate an unregulated amount. Oh, but wait, Trump is in office and he's going to make America great again. Well, if he doesn't do anything about our food, our food primary to having a healthy body and a healthy mind, he ain't going to be making America great again. So I'm going to be going through some information about this revolving door that continues to spin in the Trump era. Now, the Food and Drug Administration, it's responsible for protecting the public health by assuring that foods are safe, wholesome, sanitary, and properly labeled. And that entails regulating a large number of companies producing this nation's food, making appointments to the high-level positions within the agency, very important. High-level FDA employees have a background in either medicine or law, but one of the largest private sector sources is the Monsanto company. And over the past decades, at least seven high-ranking employees in the FDA have worked for Monsanto. Michael Taylor, appointed by Obama and this article, as you can see, is, is old. Michael Taylor, currently the deputy commissioner of the Office of Foods, um, he became the head of the FDA. Obama appointed him. And he was employed by Monsanto as vice president of public policy. Wow, that doesn't sound good. Monsanto alumni include Arthur Hayes, Commissioner of the FDA from 1981 to 1983. And Arthur Hayes was a consultant to 
Searle's public relations firm, which now is Monsanto's pharmaceutical division. Michael Friedman, former acting commissioner of the FDA, later went on to become senior vice president for political affairs at Searle, which is now a pharmaceutical division of Monsanto, which I just said. Virginia Weldon only became a member of the FDA's Endocrinologic and Metabolic Drugs Advisory Committee after retiring as vice president for public policy at Monsanto. I will link below to all of these articles. Um, here, the amazing revolving door, Monsanto, FDA, and EPA. The interplay of personnel that assist the industrial alignment of public service and regulatory authorities has led to key figures at both the United States FDA and EPA and Monsanto seems to lead the way in putting their employees into the revolving door between private corporations and government. Monsanto's genetically engineered cattle drug, RBGH, which failed to gain approval in Europe, Canada, despite intense lobbying and accusations of malpractice. Many countries have banned the use of chemicals, pesticides, um, and we don't. We ban nothing here. So Michael Taylor, Obama's appointment to head the FDA, he wrote the FDA's labeling guidelines when he was the FDA's deputy commissioner for policy, a Monsanto employee. He wrote those uh, guidelines in February 1994, stating that there's no difference between RBGH and the naturally occurring hormone. How often do we hear no difference between genetically modified foods and natural foods? A complete lie that anybody with a sound mind, a working brain cell, should get. There's got to be a difference. All right. In March 1994, Taylor was publicly exposed as a formal lawyer for the Monsanto Corporation for seven years. While working for Monsanto, Taylor had prepared a memo for the company as to whether or not it would be constitutional for states to erect labeling laws concerning RBGH, dairy products. In other words, Taylor helped Monsanto figure out whether or not the corporation could sue states or companies that wanted to tell the public that their products were free of Monsanto's drug. Margaret Miller, deputy director of the FDA's Office of New Animal Drugs, was a former Monsanto research scientist who had worked on Monsanto's RBGH safety studies up until 1989. Susan um, uh, Shan, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but she was a primary reviewer for RBGH in the Office of New Animal Drugs between 1988 and 1990. Before coming to the FDA, she had done research for several Monsanto-funded RBGH studies as a graduate student at Cornell University. Her professor was one of Monsanto's university consultants and a known RBGH promoter. And the GAO determined in 1994, a 1994 investigation, that these officials, former association with the Monsanto Corporation, did not pose a conflict of interest. 
But for those concerned about the health and environmental hazards of genetically engineering the revolving door between the biotechnology industry and federal regulating agencies is a serious cause for concern. It has been for decades. And what has happened? Our food supply has been taken over. These agencies do not work for the American people, the American people, the schmucks, send off their checks to the IRS, pay for these agencies that represent corporations. David Beyer, former head of government affairs for Genetech, he was Al Gore's domestic policy advisor. Linda Fisher former Assistant Administrator of the United States Environmental Protection Agency's Office of Pollution Prevention, Pesticides, and Toxic Substances, was the Vice President of Government and Public Affairs for Monsanto. Michael Friedman, a doctor, former Acting Commissioner of the United States Food and Drug Administration, Department of Health and Human Services was a senior vice president for clinical affairs at Searle, a pharmaceutical division of Monsanto. L. Val Giddings, former bio biotechnology regulator and biosafety negotiator at the United States Department of Agriculture, was vice president for food and agriculture of the Biotechnology Industry Organization. Marsha Hale, former assistant to the President of the United States and Director for Intergovernmental Affairs, was Director of International Government Affairs for Monsanto. Michael Cantor, former Secretary of the United States Department of Commerce and former Trade Representative of the United States, was member of the board of directors of Monsanto. Now I'm I'm stating this in past tense. So I don't know where these people are today. This article is a few years old. Josh King, former director of production for White House Events, now director of global communication in the Washington DC office of Monsanto. Terry Medley, former Administration of Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service of the United States Department of Agriculture, former Chair and Vice Chair of the United States Department of Agriculture Biotechnology Council, former member of the FDA Food Advisory Committee. He was Director of Regulatory and External Affairs of DuPont Corporations agricultural enterprise. Margaret Miller, former chemical laboratory supervisor for Monsanto, became the deputy director of human food safety and consultative services for the FDA. Michael Phillips, recently at that time, was on the National Academy of Science Board on Agriculture became the head of regulatory affairs for the Biotechnology Industry Organization. William Ruckelshaus, former Chief Administration of the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, became a member of the Board of Directors of Monsanto. Michael Taylor, Monsanto. And he has been a revolving door going back and forth from, the, uh, from Monsanto to the FDA, back to Monsanto, back to the FDA. So Obama comes in and says that he's going to stop the revolving door and people applauded him. And then when you tried to tell people that he didn't, he just said that. He was lying, and that confirmation bias, that 
everybody has, but if you're not aware of it, it can make you really dangerously ignorant. They won't look. If, if you got that confirmation bias in your head and you're not aware of it, you will immediately shut people up from telling you information that you don't want to hear and you will continually go and you're, it's not anything that you're even conscious of, but you continually seek out information that confirms your belief. If you believe that somebody walked on water, you will search out that information to confirm that belief. I, I you know, it's very kind of hard for me to understand how when you have so much information that well, challenges an awful lot of beliefs, and people just refuse to look at it. Well, they are so steeped in living a lie, they can't get out of it. Lydia Wattroud, former micro bio, micro whatever, biotechnology researcher at Monsanto, she became the United States EPA effects, working in the effects laboratory. Jack Watson, former chief of staff to the president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, became a staff lawyer with Monsanto. Clayton Uter, former secretary of U.S. Department of Agriculture, former U.S. trade representative, who led the U.S. team in negotiating the U.S.-Canada Free Trade Agreement, helped launch the Uruguay round of GATT negotiations, became a board director of Mycogen Corporation, whose majority owner was Dow Agro Sciences, a subsidy of a subsidiary of Dow Chemical company. Larry Zeff, former biologist in the Office of Prevention, Pesticides, and Toxic Substances at the EPA. He became regulatory science manager at Biohybrid International. This has been going on for decades, and it should come as no surprise that we have now a government, well, we've had a government that is not protecting any Americans' health, safety, nada. They are working for corporations in all of our agencies. Here, even the NPR did uh, an investigation posted an article, a look at how the revolving door spins from FDA to industry. NPR. Well, when I was in that liberal progressive social network, I even brought them articles posted in those outfits that they regularly got their information from and they still shut it down. Wow. Okay, so more than a quarter of the Food and Drug Administration employees who approved cancer and hematology drugs from 2001 through 2010 left the agency and now work or consult for pharmaceutical companies. Um, a, two doctors tracked 55 FDA reviewers in the hematology oncology field from those dates and found that 26 reviewers who left the FDA during that period of time, 15 of them, 57%, later worked or consulted for biopharmaceutical industry. It's very upsetting when you now can't figure out what to eat because your food is poisonous. How Monsanto invaded, occupied, now controls government regulators, senior advisors, chiefs of staff, 
judges, commissioners, and others employed at agencies like the Department of Justice, FDA, EPA, who all have, they all have one thing in common. They have held executive level positions at multinational corporations like Monsanto. And here is a list, and I'm not going, I'll link below to everything, and you can zoom in to see all of those people, but this has been going on for so long and it's not it is not just the liberal party the democrats it's not the conservative republicans we don't have two parties here we have one party and it's a corporate party they represent corporations donald rumsfeld former ceo of wow searle a pharmaceutical company that merged with Monsanto. And if you want to, and I posted a video on Kafka Winston World. Wow, read this article. How aspartame became legal. 1985, Monsanto purchased Searle, the chemical company that held the patent to aspartame. The active ingredient in NutraSweet, Monsanto was apparently untroubled by aspartame's clouded past including a 1980 FDA Board of in Inquiry comprising three independent scientists who confirmed that aspartame might induce brain tumors. The FDA banned aspartame based on that finding alone. But who is the chairman of Searle? none other than Donald Rumsfeld and he called in his markers to get it approved and wow you want to see how many people in our country are working for the wrong side don't have a moral core at all and are all about money or driven by fear and they were too afraid that Donnie might do something well evil people yeah you got to realize that they have no limitations in terms of what they can do to you if you go against them but if we don't go against them then what happens well we get to live a nightmare and that's what we are living today nightmares manifest great evil manifests so when you have corporations taking over your food supply and that food supply is no longer sustaining your health that's evil sorry for the noise outside um but who else clarence thomas you know that supreme court justice he was a formal lawyer for monsanto um Yes, the chief administrator for the EPA, William Ruckelshaus, was a Monsanto employee. Um, you know what the EPA is supposed to be doing, and it doesn't do it because it's pushing corporate agenda, not an agenda that will protect the environment for the American people. Um, and here are a few more. Islam Sadiqui, I don't know, former vice president of Crop Life America, a Monsanto affiliate. He was later appointed chief agricultural negotiator for the office of the U.S. Trade Representative. And Veneman, a former board member for the Monsanto Biotech subsidiary Calgene, Calgene who in 2001, she was appointed head of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Rufus Zerexa, I don't know, former chief counsel at Monsanto, who in 1993 was nominated as U.S. De Deputy to the World Trade Organization. Richard Mahoney, former Monsanto CEO for 14 years, would later serve as director of the U.S., Soviet, Japanese, Korean trade councils as well as member of the U.S. Government Trade Policy Committee. The infiltration 
has been thorough, very thorough. And yes, you if you are about truth, then you are recognizing how demanding it is, demanding that we do the research on the details. So I've had an awful lot of people who are still supporting Trump leaving comments underneath my videos. They're still saying, well, he got us out of the Paris Agreement. No, he didn't. He said we're pulling out of the Paris Agreement, but the Paris Agreement is, well, we had, what, 396 mayors across the country with governors signing on, becoming signatories. How do, how do, how do mayors and governors become signatories, signatories of an international agreement, a treaty? Okay, well, uh, we don't have, we're not a country ruled by law anymore. Has Trump said anything about those mayors? No. So it's yet another, you know, thing that someone says, but you got to watch what they do. So just because he says something, it doesn't mean that it is the truth or fact. The TPP, the TPP, corporations are rewriting our rules, our regulations. They have been for decades. They write the legislation. And the House representatives and senators, they are merely puppets. They propose legislation that has been given to them by corporate lobbyists. And then they pass it. So, we now have corporation, corporations, whole industries, taking away our constitutional rights. It's not just our government, it's corporations who are doing it, and our legislative, or our legal system is allowing it. Trump's 100 days, GMOs and pesticides. So, another comment that I would get from people. Look, He's fulfilling his promise. He said he was going to do away with regulations. Do you know what regulations he's doing away with? Isn't that an important thing to research? Yes, because the regulations that he is doing away with is actually creating a more unsafe environment for all of us to live. So, um, Trump has already shown you that he is pro-geoengineering, pro-GMO, pro-biotech, and he's pro-Monsanto because he's no different from all the rest who have moved in to government office. They move through that revolving door chemical companies, biotech companies, Monsanto. Um, the EPA administrator, Scott Pruitt. The U.S. DA Secretary Purdue, Sonny Purdue. They both received millions of dollars from big agriculture and chemical companies. And, well, they were put in office as the head of the EPA and the USDA, respectively. Um, President Trump signs an executive order specifically targeting agriculture and directed Secretary Purdue to undertake a 180-day review to identify and eliminate unnecessary regulations. The executive order does not specifically talk about GMOs, but it uses the same terms that biotech industries use, like advanced, advanced the adoption of innovations and technology for agricultural production, or require executive departments and agencies to reply upon the best available science when reviewing or approving crop protection tools, or encourage the production, 
export and use of domestically produced agricultural products, which are all code words for promote GMOs. And again, I've not posted that video on um, his infrastructure plan. I think he mentions once in a very uh, detailed and long if you read his infrastructure plan, it's very long. Once does he mention public-private partnerships, but if you do further research, you will find out that the entire thing is public-private partnerships, which is Agenda 21-2030. Jeff Sessions accepted contributions from Monsanto multiple times and he might be able to fast track the proposed merger of Bayer and Monsanto. He's not going to stop it. But Monsanto, Bayer Crop Science, creating the largest seed and largest pesticide company in the world. And Trump sat down with both CEO, uh, CEOs of both companies and said they had a productive meeting on the future of the agricultural industry. What do you think that future is all about? Sonny Perdue used to sell fertilizer and not the organic variety. He accepted hundreds of thousands of dollars from big ag business. He is a known proponent of GMOs and all things big ag. And he's in charge of interpreting the dark act. What's the dark act? Well, you don't get to know what's in your food. You just don't. The Dark Act, denying America's right to know. It was passed recently by Congress. It eliminated the ability of states to pass labeling requirements for GMOs. It knocked out Vermont's labeling requirement. You know, yes, the truth is very demanding. And anyone who supports any of these people and refuses to look into the details of everything that they're doing, you are not about truth. Scott Pruitt, head of the EPA, sued the EPA many times. He's in the pockets of big agriculture, doesn't like regulation. The EPA looks at pesticides and pesticide producing products. The current budget proposal, Trump's budget proposal, will fire 25% of the EPA's workforce, including nine staffers focused on endocrine disruptors, and it will knock out 31% of their budget. But, hey, there's enough money for Pruitt to have 10 new security details. Security around him only. The FDA commissioner, Scott Gottlieb, who is not only tied to over 25 entities from a financial disclosure, disclosure letter, including biotech and pharmaceutical companies, but he co-authored a report in favor of genetically engineered animals saying they have compelling benefits for healthcare, nutrition, the environment, animal welfare, uh, he's also a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute for Public Policy Research, which um, I should be reading this in past tense because none of these articles are current, but um, the Public Policy Research, it's a right-wing think tank that advocates for many things, including GMOs, very pro-GMO, and Okay, this uh, re-combatant, or re-competent, I'm sorry, re-competent, um, bovine growth hormone, RBGH, Monsanto started injecting into dairy cows. It's a genetically engineered drug that dairy cows were injected with to increase their milk supply 
and it destroyed the health of the animals. The drug also promoted IGF-1, which is a cancer-promoting hormone. And a Monsanto former scientist, or actually um, several scientists that worked on safety studies for this particular genetically engineered hormone, they stopped drinking milk. One of them got their own cow. And at no time was it required for that milk to have been labeled. What are we drinking? So Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney, and that's not the only position he had with Monsanto. He was later a vice president of some division of Monsanto. He backed that RBGH. And he was put right into the FDA as Obama's food safety czar. We have a serious problem, guys. And Trump ain't making America great again. You have to stop believing liars and watch what they do. So, um, Obama appointed Vilsack, Tom Vilsack, as his Secretary of Agriculture, who was a former biotech governor of the year. Donald Trump, he didn't do any better. Sonny Perdue, Mr. Big Agribusiness and Chemical Companies um, that have provided him with an awful lot of money to become governor of Georgia. Purdue also took money from Monsanto. Trump just appointed a chemical industry, Honcho, to protect us from chemicals. Oh my God, the American Chemistry Council represents the interests of the chemical industry. Companies that make the products that make modern life possible. Wow. As the group's website states, member companies include Big Oil, subsidiaries, Chevron, Exxon, a Saudi chemical giant, uh, Bayer, Monsanto, Dow Chemical. Trump appointed Nancy Beck, who was the American Chemistry Council Senior Director of Regulatory Science Policy. She became Deputy Assistant Administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency Office that regulates the chemical industry. Susan Co Com um, Combs. Uh, Trump appointed her to be the Acting Assistant Secretary for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. And she now oversees the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And she's supposed to be protecting endangered species. And she doesn't give a shit about endangered species. She cares about the oil and gas industry. She was the former Texas State Comptroller for the Department of Public, uh, for Parks and Wildlife in Texas. And she did everything in her position of authority to oppose any Endangered Species Act protections. And Combs is the third appointee named as Acting Assistant Secretary for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks since Trump took office. Another one appointed a former Monsanto employee. Um, and I'm sorry that this is going on long, but yeah, the truth demands time, energy, and looking into every detail, especially today when life has really become something we have never lived before. These people are dangerous. A whole lot of Americans are dangerous because they involve themselves in industry, in jobs, in employment as the useful idiot, the cog in the wheel that keeps all of these dangers 
mounting up for all of us. Scott Gottlieb, his, uh, Trump's nominee for the FDA. Well, he's now the head of the FDA. Close relationships with the pharmaceutical industry. So, Donald Trump's 100-day action plan to make America great again. Uh, well, he offered a document and the president says that's a contract with American voters. It states, reforms will also include cutting the red tape at the FDA. There are over 4,000 drugs awaiting approval and we especially want to speed the approval for life-saving medications. The FDA now has approved so many medications on the market that are so dangerous and these are the regulations that you're supporting to be cut making it easier for the FDA to put out dangerous medications for the American public Gottlieb called for faster approval um, he has focused on ways to move away from waiting for large clinical trial results Writing in Massachusetts newspaper, South Coast Today, Gottlieb praised the 21st Century Cures Act, which was signed into law December 2016 by Obama. That said, it would help smooth the way for quicker approvals by zeroing in on results from small trials and interim studies, which means we are guinea pigs. Interim studies. Medications approved, put on the market, and they're going to be doing interim studies as Americans are taking those medications. Does that sound wise? An article Gottlieb penned in 2012 for National Affairs. He criticized the FDA for setting up too many regulatory hurdles. There, too, he argued that extensive clinical trial requirements may have a chilling effect on bringing new therapies to market. He blamed such requirements on an institutional culture that he said values an excessive desire for certainty. Wow! And does not trust the doctors who do the prescribing. Okay, this is who Trump put in charge of the FDA. Can we trust our doctors who get their um, information from pharmaceutical reps who are selling the drugs? No, we don't trust our doctors and we shouldn't trust our doctors because many are killing an awful lot of Americans and people all over the world. Pharma death clock. Total deaths since January 1, 2000. Chemotherapy, 18,376,971 people died from chemotherapy. That's the cure of cancer, right? How about those deaths caused by those doctors? 14,406,369. Hospital errors, 8 million. 85,867 drug resistance tuberculosis MDR well bed sores 2,113,351 hospital malnutrition 1 million well close to 2 million adverse drug reactions 1 million well close to 2 million medical errors close to 2 million hospital infections close to 1.5 million SSRIs, those psychiatric medications, 735,078. Surgery-related deaths, 500, well, half a million. Superbugs, half a million. I'm rounding off the numbers. Prescription drugs, half a million. I frankly think that these numbers are higher. Um, but you can you can take a look at more of the categories. 
worldwide deaths since January 2000. Superbugs, close to 13 million. Opioids, just over 2 million. Abortion deaths, close to a million. I don't know, I think that number is probably higher. Deaths in Western countries, over 9 million due to psychiatric drugs, including suicides, because psychiatric drugs induce suicidal ideation. Chemotherapy in the UK since 2000, quarter of a million. We have a big problem, guys, a very big problem. And no, Trump, I'm sorry, he's not making your America great again. The FDA, the MHRA, the regula uh, regulatory bodies of the pharmaceutical companies in the USA and Britain, both controlled by the big pharmaceutical corporations. The FDA, the MHRA, have big pharma directors on their boards and big pharma control regulation. So does Monsanto and it's not going to stop under Trump's watch. I will link below to all of this information but unfortunately because it is, I guess, very difficult for people to accept that when you vote for the lesser of two evils, you get evil. When you continually believe liars, well, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position to get destroyed by them. And if we can't get our shit together, we will all be destroyed. And do I think that we can get our shit together? No. No. Because, and this is the number one problem that we have, people do not do the work necessary to lift themselves from a low road to a higher road but that is absolutely 100% the most important truth that every individual needs to face. The truth about their own self. If you're not there, then you are putting your life in the hands of people who are killing life and that includes Trump. So clean your room as Jordan Peterson exhorts us to do. Start improving the world by improving yourself. Be a better human. It's the most surefire, realistic, pragmatic way you can make an immediate difference in the world. You can change your thoughts and actions much more readily, readily than anyone else if you're comfortable and still believe that somebody else is going to be fixing the problem. Oh, like Trump in the White House. You've got to ask yourself, why? Why? Why, after all this time, watching president after president, regardless of party, Screw the American people. Why is it that you think Trump is different? Because he's fighting the deep state? Could it be that that is all part of the play, the staged play, to keep those Trump supporters supporting this guy, Trump, and uh, he's going to fix everything so you don't have to do anything? Or Christians who believe that God's going to make everything right. And all of this was written in the Bible, that staged play. Hey, written in the Bible. So I take comfort in Jesus because everything was written in the Bible. You take comfort when so many people are dying and suffering 
oh, okay, I don't see Jesus doing that, but go for it, hey. We have to question our beliefs. We have to question everything today. And it's not just questioning those people in Washington, D.C., or your local government officials, but questioning yourself. That's the most important question. Those are the most important questions. The most important truth is the truth within you. And if you can't face yourself in the mirror, if you've not done any of that work, then you cannot say that you are about truth and you cannot say that you are part of the solution because that solution requires every individual to grow, to grow themselves, to mature. So this will be included in the links below and it's very important. It is very important. You start with yourself. And not a whole hell of a lot of people want to face the truth about how they live, how they think, what they say, and then what they do, the uh, not matched. There are two kinds of people. Those who believe that they are a victim of the world and those who understand that they are the world. We are all connected. Everything we do has a ripple effect. You've got to be very, very aware of your thoughts, your actions, and that ripple effect. If you are doing nothing, that's a ripple effect that allows the evil to continue destroying all of us. If you are lying to yourself, you're lying to other people, and that is a very dangerous ripple effect. If you are not working on yourself, haven't even begun to do any work on yourself, your ripple effect is dangerous because you don't know who you are and you have no self-awareness of what you do, what you say, and that creates chaos and insanity. If you are working on yourself, then you're on the road to that narrow road. You're on the road to becoming a human being that will contribute to making the world a better place. Unfortunately, they, they are few and far between. So their ripple effect is hardly even noticed because they are so few and far between. We need every one of us, every one of us to be focused on what we are doing and stop believing the delusions that create comfort for you, that allow you to justify sitting back and doing nothing. You throw out a comment like, hey, Trump is fulfilling his promise by deregulating, and you don't even know what he's deregulating. So you become a supporter of putting more medications on the market that's going to be killing people. All links are below, uh, are below.